Hi everyone, my name is Brian Mullen with Chops Up, and today I'm going to be showing you a fast and efficient way to not only change your toms, uh, but tuning them as well. And so I have here a 12 inch and a 14 inch floor tom, uh, and some of the things you'll need right off the bat is if uh, you want to be prepared, is to have your toms ready, your, your the new heads ready, one, two drum keys, a drum stick, and one thing I do want to stress is that you want to have a nice flat surface to do this on. It's okay to do it directly on, say, the floor tom legs or to do it on if you have your tom on a snare stand like I do. Uh, but you want a really nice flat surface. And the reason for that is once you do end up putting the head on, uh, you want it to be nice and level. You want it to be even. You don't want it to be shading towards one side or the other, okay? So things usually go by quicker when you have two keys. So... I'm going to use two keys to take them off. And I'm going opposite sides too. Uh, I'm not going to end up using these heads again, but sometimes if I do want to change the heads for stylistic purposes, and these heads are fine, because uh, I'm going from clear to a coated uh, ambassador. So sometimes you especially when you're putting it back on, you want to make sure that the tension is nice and level on both sides. Uh, but it's just easier as well to do it with, when you have two keys, to do it with, uh, you know, opposite ends like this. So I got all the lugs off, take the rim off, Make sure there's no deficiencies, nothing in there that's going to, um, you know, get in the way of the, the new drum head. Here's the old one. It's going to toss this. And speaking of deficiencies, what I'll usually do is I will run my fingers around the bearing edge of the drum. Uh, sometimes you can get some, you know, wood particles or some, some dust that gets collected in there. And we just want to make sure that we have a nice you know, flush surface for the drums to go on. And while this uh, top head is off, you know, I may just make sure that any of the lugs that are inside here are nice and tight. Um, you don't want anything rattling, you know, especially if you're going to be recording with these drums like I do quite frequently. Uh, so, you know, I may just double check to make sure everything is, everything is fine, which it seems to be. And so now I got my new drum head, and I usually match it with the logo. That way it looks nice and pretty when it's, you know, facing you, you got the logo on top. So I have the head on there. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Make sure it's uh, nice and e even. Put my rim back on. And now what I'll do is I'll take two lugs, and I'll just... I'll start threading them, and I just want to make sure they're about finger tight, okay? Uh, as I said before, you don't want to put them all on one side and then hammer them down, uh, because then you're putting a lot of stress on one side of the drum, and the drum head is going to ultimately uh, not be your friend. It could even break, you could do damage to the drum, so we just like to make sure that we do it on even ends. Like I said, I'm just going to... Start the thread, my last two here, cool, I got my two, two drum keys here, again same as we did before, start on opposite ends, make sure I'm making contact, not to over tighten, not just yet. Other side, last time with these ones. Now you may hear some cracks when you start tightening these heads and that's a good thing. It means the head is stretching out, there's glue along the inside. Let's see if I can get one to pop for you. Especially as we're starting to get really tight now. And at this point, the head is on there pretty good. I'm just gonna use one, one key. And I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that the rest of these lugs are about equal for now.
and I'll just take my fist and I'll press down on it to stretch the head a little bit. Now, starting from the lug that's closest to me, I'm just going to start working my way around and I'm going to back the lug off all the way so I know it's my starting point. And I'm just going to try to match the tension going all the way around. You don't need to crank these two, these uh, these heads up, these toms up. It depends on stylistically what you want. But again, this thing is really loose right now, so I'm just going to make sure it makes contact. And I'm just going to give it one full twist, maybe another one until it starts resisting. I'm looking for matching the tension that's all the way around. Um, I'm not necessarily looking for a specific... Um, Note, even though with these, particularly with these DWs, uh, they'll usually list on the inside, which this one is a B flat. Um, but I'm not actively searching to tune this to a B flat. Uh, I, I'm just looking for a nice solid tone that's going to be going all the way around. And so, again, backing it off. It starts resisting. I'm not going to push too much on it. Back this one off. Starts resisting there. And each head is ultimately going to be different, especially when you start working with different sizes. Um, again, these are coated ambassadors, so they are a, a thinner ply with a coat. Now, if you were to use, say, like a, a coated uh, Emperor or even, you know, an Evans EC2, they tend to be a little bit thicker. Um, so you, you almost need to crank them up even more because there's more film there. So you want to make sure that those ones are nice and tight. You're going to get a nice, nice fat sound out of these. With these uh, thinner heads, you're going to get a nice, brighter, full tone sound. Last one. Try to match that tension. Now let's see how we did for our first time. Sounds pretty decent. Sounds like a drum, okay? So we didn't have to do too much. If we want to tweak it a little bit, if you want a little bit higher, I would just, same thing, start from the one closest to you and maybe just give it a, a quarter turn more. That one was pretty tight. That one's pretty tight. A little bit more. It's sustaining the note. Another thing with the DWs, which if you've seen uh, John Good do this before, he hits the side of the drum. That's ultimately the tone that you want to have. Uh, that's supposed to be the B flat that this drum is. Bum bum bum. Bum bum bum. Bum bum bum. Now, if I hit it really hard, it's a little tight, so I'm going to back it back down. And it's okay to start over if you're having a tough time finding that really nice tone. It's okay to back these lugs off all the way. Start fresh. Some things you want to avoid having, as I said before, is the vibration. You really want to avoid having those any type of metal on metal sound that's going to rattle, um, cause any type of bad vibrations. Uh, another thing you want to listen for is dive bombs. You know, bow. Uh, what that usually means is that the bottom head is too far away from the top head in tension and in um, and in sound. So if you have to, you may need to take a quick peek at the bottom head and while it's off its mount, I'm just going to do a quick assessment. Um, you know, for me in particular, I like my toms to be really deep. And so I want them to have a, a nice bassy tone to them. I love having my toms being run through subwoofers. Uh, it really brings a nice like fatness to it. So with these, with the rack toms, uh, I'm not going to over tighten these. Some people have a different opinion on them. They, they want to either match 
the sound or they want these really tight. I'm almost the opposite. I want these bottom heads to be uh, fairly loose. So when you hit it, boom, you get that nice descending sound. Um, and, and it just really, it's going to really open up some, some sounds for you, some great undertones, um, especially if you're doing the tom beats and stuff like that. So let's try it again. Sounds like got a batch. So I'm just going to tune this top head back up a little bit. Now we got our 14 here, floor tom. Uh, right now, this is the bottom head. So while we have it flipped upside down, I'm just gonna do a quick assessment. Uh, for the floor toms, uh, especially when you start getting into the 16s and 18s, you start getting some really weird uh, undertones, uh, especially when you're recording. The, those mics are gonna pick up everything. So opposite of the rack toms, I'm gonna take this bottom head and I'm gonna tune it up just a little bit to avoid any of the vibrations um, that may come through with the kick drum or you know anything that the mic is gonna pick up, especially if you're recording as a band and the bass player has his rig right next to yours, it's gonna pick it up, okay? Um, so this head is already on there pretty well. I'm just gonna go around each lug, back it off, start fresh, Matching the tensions all the way around. That see, that was barely on there. So that's the one I started on. So I may just take the butt end of my stick. Just go around the lugs if you like. Again, I want to match the tension all the way around so I can really get a nice uh, equal amount of uh, timber that's happening in the middle here in the center. Okay, so I'm going to flip it over. Same as we did before. I'm going to use two keys, opposite ends. And I'm just going to start backing these off. Okay, now that I got all the lugs loose, I'm just gonna pop it right off. Same as we did before, just gonna run my thumb around the rim. A little bit of dust collection going on the side here. All these nuts and bolts seem to be pretty tight. Everything looks good. So Got my new drum head here. Again, I'm gonna match the logo, which is over here. Pop this bad boy back on. Nice and even. Same as we did before, opposite ends. Start threading the lugs. like I got them all. All right, got my drum keys, opposite ends. Let's 
So another thing I might do just to make sure that I got them all, is just run my finger around the lugs, make sure none of them move around. Fist right down the middle. Just want to make sure I stretch that head out so when we do go to tune this bad boy uh, and we get the lugs where we want, as soon as you start playing it, the vibration, it's going to stretch by itself anyway. So this is kind of making sure that it's going to keep its tuning for a longer period of time. Okay, now same as we did before, I'm going to start with the lug that's closest to me. Back it off. And just find the point where it starts resisting you a little bit. And practice is going to make improvement on this. Uh, only over time are you really going to be able to find that sweet spot where you go like, okay, now this is like the point where I feel enough tension where it's resisting me. Uh, it, it's going to take a while of practice. And there are a number of different factors uh, at play. Another thing that I didn't mention before, like with these DWs, if you can see, they have little plastic washers in here. Over time... Uh, they're gonna wear so and and some other companies have uh, plastic washes as well Ludwig I believe does Yamaha used to they may they may have gotten rid of their washers um, so there's a number of different factors at play which is why you see so many videos online about how how to properly tune a drum everyone has a different opinion on it so this is just maybe a different way that you can look at it okay that's the last lug all the tension seems to be matching Let's see how I did. It's choking it a little bit. It's also the fact that I'm holding it by the rim. Um, you know, it's going to sound different once it gets in the legs. It's a little high. So I'm just going to back it down a little bit. Quarter turn all the way around. Barely on. Let's try it again. Still a little high. Maybe we cranked our bottom head too high. All the more reason for you to tune this with the legs off on a flat surface. You change the head, it's going to change ultimately the sound of the drum. Okay. As I said before, if you're using, you know, pinstripes by Remo, EC2s, they're going to be a little bit thicker. Um, so you may need to put a little bit more tension on them so they can hold its tone. These thinner heads, you may need a little bit less tension, uh, like the G1s uh, for Evans or these Ambassadors. Um, you may need a little bit less tension for them to really get the, the proper tone that you're looking for. Okay, so I just back down the, the bottom heads. I haven't touched the top head. Still got some funky overtones going on here. So I'm just gonna, as I said before, it's okay to start over. Back it off. Find a nice tension. See that one was pretty tight compared to compared to that last one. So. Start it on. I'm just going to do one last check. See how it is. Slight b -b 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 vibration going on. Sounds like a drum. Ultimately, I'm pretty happy with that. Even for a 14, I believe this is a 14 by 14. This is going to get, um, it's not going to be too deep. It, it's going to have a nice, a nice deep tone to it, but it's not going to be a thunderous floor tom like you would get out of an 18. Um, so I, I'm pretty happy with this tone. 
it's sustaining. I may just crank it up just a little bit to avoid that, that little vibration that we heard there. Check it again. Ultimately, that's holding a lot better. So it's just a matter of playing around. It's a matter of, you know, experimenting with different tensions that you may or may not like. And um, like, as I said, practice is going to make improvement on this. Um, experience is going to make this go by a whole lot quicker. So hopefully this helped you out. And uh, let's see how the kit sounds once we hook it all up.